All right, we're starting about 10 minutes early because I can. Let me just move my mic a little closer to my face. Here we go. Um, today is a very special day. Today, we are using a guide that I put together. A guide, in quotation marks. I figured it out on my own earlier today. I turned it into a guide so that I can make sure I do the same thing now. Um, and it actually goes through quite a few achievements. Um, as a result, it's kind of all over the place, but it works out quite nicely for what I was going for. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to say before I get started? No, I think that about covers it. Start game. <sighs> And for anyone who's been here before, this is a familiar sight. Also, for anyone who's been here before, my loathing for Joslyn is no secret. This guy. This guy. So useless. Okay. We're almost home. Your room is just the way you left it. And Elodie is very sad because her mom just died. I know it's hard to leave school leave your school and all your friends, but I've arranged the best possible tutors for every subject. You'll have to work hard this year to prepare yourself before your 15th birthday, but I know you can do it. You'll learn quickly and you'll make a wonderful queen. It's what your mother would have wanted. This is not what mother would have wanted! She wouldn't have wanted to die and leave me. No, she wouldn't. But sometimes bad things happen. We have to pick up and carry on. All of Nova depends on us. On you. <sighs> I will be here to guide you until your coronation. Yeah, right. But the decisions you make are ultimately up to you. Come, your maids are waiting. I have most certainly played this before. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that I have played this before. Alright, and we have a massive penalty to this. But there's a skill check I want to pass that requires ten composure. So, between these two... We will have enough. Ta-da! What's all that noise outside? Who's here? Oh, it's my cousins and my aunt and uncle. Darling, we are so terribly sorry to hear about your mother, Fidelia. Thank you. You look well, niece. Hi, Lodi. Hi, Lottie. I haven't seen you in ages. Will you be staying long? Yep. Mommy said we'd be here all month. Maybe we'll have some time to talk later. And we're going to go visit Charlotte right now. I love this room. It's so much bigger than mine back home. You should visit more often. It's awful that the only time I get to see you is something like this. I know your brother and sister are still too young, but why haven't you come to school? My mother worries about me. She doesn't think anywhere but home is safe. I understand. I'm probably not going to be allowed to leave this castle until my birthday. But at least we can have fun together here. And now we start working on court manners. Yeah, I did two classes in court manners. <laughs> um, unfortunately in this, I did not work out how to fit in everything I wanted to do. So we do not found the printing press or the hospital in this playthrough. I'll probably eventually do one where I can do both of those in the same playthrough. Because it is possible. I've done it. Just, uh, not in this particular one that I set up. So. Alright. Court and manners. And then we get to see Juliana. What's that commotion outside? Father, what's going on? I've come to pay my respects in honor of your mother. You have no respect or honor. It's because of you and your powers that my wife is dead. What? I am a Lumen, as was she, and like every Lumen, I am willing to give my life if necessary to protect our domain. Your line has been traitors for two hundred years. I won't have you corrupting my daughter. That is for the Crown Princess to decide. Elodie, your mother trusted me, and I have much to teach you. And we're going to let her stay. I want to hear what she has to say. She stays. As you wish. And we're going to go attend services. So we're depressed again. 
fun, fun, fun. And we're not really playing to the bonuses that I could potentially have, but that's okay. Foreign intelligence. And I was originally trying to go for the printing press before I realized that wasn't going to happen. But we do end up with enough skill and economics to leave taxes alone when that check comes up, so that's something helpful. Now, week three. Foreign intelligence and accounting. Yes. He loves me, he loves me not. Lottie, do you have a boyfriend? Not really, I just like to play with the flowers. All of a sudden, the Duchess of Ursul rushes into the garden and points a sword at you. No, not at you. At your feet? Princess, don't move. You bite your lip and hold perfectly still, resisting the urge to look down. And that is why we took the composure lessons even with the penalty. Jul Jul bleh. Juliana swings her sword. There, it's dead. You look down at your feet and see a snake in the grass. Eek! What is going on out here? Mommy, there is a snake. The Duchess of Ursul protected us. Milk vipers are not native to this area. That snake should never have been here. This is unacceptable. I can't have my daughter remaining in such a dangerous place. We are returning home to Merva at once. Aww. I went to the dungeons this week. Which, I'll read this text because it actually changes depending on your mood. You sneak a peek at some of the luckless peasants held in the dungeons, petty thieves and troublemakers, now suffering in the dark. They're obviously bad people, but seeing them so miserable still feels unfair. There must be a better way. So we're depressed. And we have two economics lessons in trade. The castle seems quieter with Charlotte and Emery and Zara and their parents gone. It's certainly not empty, though. It seems like we get more servants every day. And we're going to go attend service. So we are willful. And willful stuck around a lot longer than I wanted it to, but I managed to make it work for me. Intrigue for intelligence and internal affairs. Ah, nothing important to read out there. One of the maids approaches for your attention. My lady, couriers have arrived from the Duke of Sedna. Sedna, that's in Toulaise, the domain to our southeast. They have brought you a letter and a gift. Condolences on the death of, deeply regret, best wishes. Oh, what a beautiful necklace. What, what is my tablet doing? It is crashing, apparently. <laughs> or at least crashing docks. Alright, I'll fix that in a second. Oh, what a beautiful necklace! It might not be appropriate for me to wear a man's gift in public, though. People would think it meant something. It's important to maintain the proper image. Now, if I could fix my thing so that I can see what I'm meant to do here, that would be great. Technical difficulties, always the worst. And we are going to visit the gardens, or walk in the gardens. So we're still willful. And we do some ciphering and more internal affairs, because there's a specific achievement that you get that requires pretty much maxing out internal affairs. So I was gunning for that one the entire playthrough, even though I don't actually do anything with that information. <laughs> Anyways, do the thing in ciphering. All right, this is the beginning of something important. The last Duke of Mead was the older half-brother of the current Duchess. His reign was brief and highly scandalous. He defied tradition to pledge himself as the life mate of the old Duke of Ursul, then broke that off only a year later. He retired into seclusion and died still unwed. Okay. So, I'll deal with that in a second. I take back what I just said about internal affairs doing nothing. Something comes up with that soon, but I don't do anything with the information I ultimately learned. 
But that's okay. Anyways, your royal highness, I would speak with you. What is it? You have many questions, and the answers are within your grasp. You need only choose to seek them. Speak to the Duchess of Ursul. She will guide you on your path. What is it you wanted to teach me? First, I need to know if you have your mother's crystal. What crystal? The source of power for any lumen is a particular magical crystal. Once you've bonded with it, it becomes a part of you as long as you live. The royal crystal has been passed down from ruler to ruler for generations. It belongs to you now, except that the king may be keeping it from you. Do you have a crystal? Of course. She holds out her hands, light flickers above her bosom, and then, with a shower of sparkles, something takes shape. You reach out to touch it, and it dissolves away into nothing. Oh, it belongs to me. No one can take it from me until I die. You need to find the crystal that belongs to you. Alright. And we have two classes in public speaking. As you are walking up the stairs, a maid comes running down, holding a towering pile of linen. Before you can react, she barrels into you, sending you and the sheets flying. Oh, my lady, I'm so sorry. These things happen. It's not a big deal. No real harm done. Please be more careful in the future. Yes, my lady. Thank you. I'm going to go play with toys. Oh, I forgot we get cheerful. Yay! Doesn't this give me a penalty to history? Which is what my next class is. Foreign Affairs. Ah, no, it's just no bonus. That's fine. Alright, this is relevant. Four years ago, the Duchess of Hellas tried to foment an insurrection in northern Ixion, just above the Galban River border. Not only did that fail, but in retaliation, Ixion pushed troops into, the southern, into southern Marie. That's her brother's territory. And they are still refusing to leave. Well, one of her brother's territory. They ha she has two brothers. But we don't see the other one in this playthrough. You rarely see him at all, actually. There is a man here to see you. He wishes crown funding for a project of his. Remember, the treasury is not unlimited. If you choose to invest, you will have less money to work with later. Your Royal Highness, I have a plan to print books using metal letters which can be moved and reused. I need to borrow 875 Lassie to assemble the metal and a factory to mold and cast the type. With this system, we will be able to create new books in a fraction of the time it takes now and make copies to send all over the world. I don't know much about factories or trade. Would that really be worthwhile? We are not interested. I so wish you could ask questions about it, but you can't. And it kills me. Alright, attend court. So, for week nine, we are yielding. Alright, intrigue internal affairs because we spent a lot of time working on that and the beginning of our royal demeanor lessons <laughs> this one's also relevant the duke of murray has paid suit to the duchess of ursul to no avail the duchess's brother is opposed as he will inherit if she dies childless your agents suspect the duchess of ursul is actually more interested in the duchess of hellas neither has ever been linked to a man <laughs> Banyan. And look at this. <laughs> Single, unsuccessfully romanced Juliana, Duchess of Ursul. <laughs> oh, I find that so funny. Banyan has the worst romantic luck and it serves him right because he is a creep. Your Highness, my sympathies for your loss. Even after all these years, I sometimes forget that my own mother will never be coming back. Thank you. However, I must call for your aid. The Ixianite occupation of the country of Im County of Imbrium has gone on for far too long. Now is the time to push back. His sister, the Duchess of Hellas, started trouble in Ixion four years ago, so they invaded his territory as payback. I don't know anything about the military. I don't want to fight. There must be a peaceful way to settle this. I will send for diplomats from Ixion and try to come to some arrangement. Thank you, your highness. If I might say so, you are looking particularly lovely this day. I hope you will think fondly of me. Is he flirting with me? He's almost as old as my father. Yep. He's flirting with you. Which, uh, gag me with a spoon, please? That's disgusting. Let me take a drink of water before I read this. 
Dad, what happened to Mom's Lumen Crystal? It's in a safe place. Can I have it? No. But it's mine. Meddling with magic kills your mother. I don't want that to happen to you. Once you're crowned queen, I can't stop you from doing anything you want, but for now, you are still a child. <sighs> Joslyn, Mr. Useless. Right, and ciphering. And one in elegance. Yes. Even left a new outfit. Yay! The representative from Ixion is here. Be careful, no one wants to give up prizes that they have won. You have the full support of my sis my sister and myself, your highness. <laughs> Let's get this over with. Your royal highness, thank you for granting me this audience. I'm sure we can come to an amicable agreement. Let bygones be bygones, no? We will forget about your unprovoked attacks on us, and you will transfer the rights to this little province. It was the Duchess of Hellas who tried to take over part of Ixion's territory without the support of my mother, the queen. We can be good neighbors again without any lives being lost. Offer to punish the Duchess of Hellas. We appreciate that you feel wrong. wronged. One of our subjects attempted to instigate a rebellion in your territory. However, she did not have our approval for these actions. If you withdraw your troops, we will punish her. Your Highness! This is the fair solution. You have no right to invade us because of her actions. What manner of punishment were you considering? Command her to marry an Ixionite. She will marry an Ixionite lord of your choosing. I will not. You will if I say you will, or I'll take your title away. Her heirs will be of your blood in a peaceful union that benefits us both. Very well, we will accept this arrangement. Once he leaves, you take the Duchess of Hellas aside. You have to marry someone, even if you don't like men. You need an heir quickly. With a foreign husband, you'll have fewer problems if you divorce him after having a child. Very well. Which makes them slightly less likely to try to murder me? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Alright. Gonna need to visit Juliana. My father says I can't have the crystal until I'm queen, so we'll just have to wait. There may not be time to wait. This world is filled with dangers, and you will need the, p the powers of Illumin to fight them. You can't begin training until you've bonded with your crystal. Well, what else am I supposed to do about it? The crystal is probably held under guard in the royal treasury. You are the princess. You should be able to find a way inside. Otherwise, we might have to take drastic action. No, I trust my father, and he says I shouldn't do this. He is trying to protect you. So am I. But we are not going to become a lumen yet. Um, Elodie doesn't actually become a lumen until the epilogue in this one. But she does become one, and probably a damn good one at that. Not that we actually see anything about it. Hmm. Okay, so we have two lessons in flattery this week. Which does not unlock the tea dress outfit yet. Okay. There are reports that a key thong has been sighted leaving the old forest. What's a key thong? A beast with the body of an enormous golden cat, a sharp beak, and spikes on its back. Eek! Several disappearances in southern Caloris are already thought to be the work of this creature. What do we do? Should we send hunters? The traditional policy on stray beasts is to hope that they return to the forest and stay there. Hunters are no match for such creatures. You would only make it angry and waste more lives. So, we just let it eat people? Everyone dies in the end. You do not say that sort of thing to your 14-year-old daughter when she just lost her mother. God damn it, Jocelyn. I'm fine. I'm not angry. What are you talking about? <laughs> and we sneak out. Oh. <laughs> My tablet is really not having any of this, is it? Oh, though this time it's because it's automatically updating the app. At a most inopportune time. Alright. <sighs> We're on week 12. Um... But, yeah, Bryn needs an heir, but she's kind of a lesbian. Well, there's no kind of about it. She is a lesbian. But since she needs an heir, you know, that needs to happen. But Elodie found out that she's a lesbian. So she's like, hey, get your heir and then divorce the guy. Since he's foreign, you'll have less trouble doing it. Okay, so for conversation, 
We do public speaking and court manners. And did I learn anything interesting here? No, I did not. And now we have the new outfit, which I'm going to put on as soon as this is over. <sighs> and this is the hospital that I cannot fund. There is a woman here to see you. She wishes crown funding for a project. Thank you for seeing me, your royal highness. I, I come to you on behalf of the people. I wish to build a hospital where any citizen afflicted with disease can be brought for treatment. Putting all the sick people together, wouldn't that make them die even faster? We are not interested. We're going to attend court. So we should stay yielding, yes. And we're going to put that on because we definitely need it. Alrighty, week 13. Do court manners and flattery. Oh, this this week, this is where some of the internal affairs I was learning comes in handy. You are requested to stand in judgment. A woman has been convicted of attempted murder and requests the mercy of the crown. Let's have a drink of water before I start reading Kevin. Your Highness, this slattern dares to beg pardon when she admits that she tried to poison my sister under her own roof. Which sister? Khorasandi, the Duchess of Mead. Is she alright? She is unharmed. We caught the culprit in the kitchens before anyone could eat her foul spew. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? It's just as it is. Them devils killed me brother and broke me mom's heart. Lied to her, they did. When she went to see why he'd not come back, said he'd gone for a soldier when he never would. He weren't the only one, neither. I waited ten years for my chance to get my own back. That's justice. You see, she's completely unrepentant. Hang her and be done with it. Hmm. This might have something to do with the last Duke of Mead. He was involved in all sorts of scandals. I need to know if she has any justification for her actions. However, directly accusing a noble of murder would create an uproar. We must be circumspect. Is it possible that a relative of this woman may have met an untimely demise at some point in the past? That is not impossible. However, if that were the case, it would still have nothing to do with Khorasandi. The person who might have been involved is already dead and buried, and not much missed. Well then, as you see, divine justice has already been carried out. You blamed an innocent woman, one who might have had sympathy for you if you had told her the truth. Not all nobles are the same. I, I never thought. You will have time to think about your actions in the dungeons. She should be hanged. She acted for the love of her sibling. Surely you can understand that. No one else needs to die. Whew. That's still nerve-wracking, because Kevin has such a hair-trigger temper. It's... Ugh. Okay. So now we get to work on royal demeanor. So. Composure and presence. Right? Yes. You practice positive thinking, maintaining a good self-image and conditioning yourself to carry on rather than be frustrated with any past misstep. Oh, if only. If only. That would be so nice to be able to do for me in person. <sighs> Elodie is my dumb child who knows absolutely nothing about animals. As you are walking one day in the gardens, you hear a strange sound and look up to see an owl flying overhead. A single dry leaf flutters in its talons. That's funny. I thought owls were nocturnal. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Elodie, please. Alright, yeah. That's what we were meant to do. And I'm actually going to save. Yeah, I had a lot of saves when I was figuring this out. Alright, um, what did I call this one? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Return. Fifteen. We have elegance and compose. No, two and elegance. This would be fifteen, not sixteen. And we have a new outfit. Yay! Remember that the Festival of the Good Lady is approaching. There will be public celebrations for the commoners, followed by a grand gala for the nobility. A grand ball. There will be dancing. 
As queen, you would be expected to lead the procession and take part in the ceremonial planting, possibly give a speech. However, since you are not yet crowned, it is not required, and it may not be safe to expose you to the public. What do you mean, not safe? Outside the castle, you are less well protected. If anyone means you harm, think on it now, decide later. There is a letter for you as well. It's from Brienne. I went to school with her, but she's a couple years older than me. Her mother is the Duchess of Mead. She's complaining that her mother still won't let her come home for the holidays. She's bored and looking for an adventure. Well, I don't have any to suggest to her. I swear, I know how to talk. And we're going to sneak out. So we're still yielding, but now not as much. After week 16, another in elegance and one in composure. <sighs> Today is the procession and planting for the Festival of the Good Lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. The people will recover from disappointment. If we lose you, there is no recovery. I'm not afraid. I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. She's going to give a speech. My little girl. You prepare your best gown for the occasion, then walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter that's taller than you are. You can tell from the excited murmurs around you that the people are impressed with your queenly appearance. At the end of the route, you help the priestesses turn over the earth for a new tree to be planted. After the blessings are read, you hold up your hands and call for silence so that you can speak. And I tested this. If you aren't wearing the tea dress at this point, you will fail giving the speech. So I had to backtrack on that one real quick. Hmm. Excuse me. My affectionate greetings to you all, and my thanks, for it is the people that make this domain great. We are here today to celebrate the gifts of the good lady, the promise of fertility and new birth. Winter always comes, but winter is followed by spring. Each of us faces hardships, but we grow back stronger than ever. Now is the time for new beginnings, and for my beginning as your queen. Your words are met with great applause. The procession regroups to return to the castle. All of a sudden, there is a faint rumbling noise from under your feet. The newly planted tree in front of you quivers, and then, out of nowhere, a spurt of water comes up from the ground, spattering you and the assembled crowd with droplets. Just as quickly as it began, it vanishes. The priestesses try to calm the crowds with talk of omens and natural eruptions, but they can't halt the whispers. Dark magic. That water tasted of salt. We're going to attend services to get rid of that plus one afraid that we just got. Mm. I do one in presence, and I started working on expression for something that I don't remember. At the for week 17, we did instrument. Alright. Are you ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in the domain are here to see you to see their queen. And <laughs> naturally, she's nervous. You finish dressing and descend the stairs to make a grand entrance. Hmm. All around, the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you, the ruler of them all. You let your eyes re rest upon each of them in turn as you have been taught, impressing upon them that you are not a child, but a queen. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and offers you his arm. The first dance is for us. He guides you gently around the dance floor, never rushing you. It's fun to dance with your father, but the look in his eyes is so sad. After this, you must choose your own partner. There are a number of men who hope to catch your eye. The Duke of Kigal alone has brought three eligible sons, all near your age. And this time, we'll actually get to see who all of our potential partners are, and choose. You look around the room at all of your possible partners, which is to say, everyone. No one may begin dancing until you do. You can pick whomever you want, and you will not be denied. No doubt every noble family with eligible sons has dreams of a royal wedding. Your choice will raise some hopes and dash others. Feuds could be born here. I'm going to save here because I am not going to go through with with the choice I'm about to make. Just because I want to show all the extra details you get when you... Um... Um... 
just lost my train of thought completely. When you choose to look at the women you can dance with. Okay. The Duke of Kigal has not yet named any of his sons as his official heir, but his second son, Linley, was always kind to you at school. If you wish to show favor to Kigal, Linley would be your choice. The Duchy of Elath is currently held in regency for its young lord Adair, who is only twelve and a head shorter than you are. Elath is a rich territory, and at least little Adair wouldn't try to take any liberties. Dancing with Banyan, the Duke of Marie, could be quite awkward if he did not actually wish to marry him. He has been waiting years for a powerful heiress to accept his suit. Not all nobles are created equal. You could choose someone charming and unimportant, like the Earl of Mima, a territory too minor for anyone to consider it a threat. However, the major families might eat him alive afterwards. If you wish to distract attention from your marital prospects, you could choose someone clearly ineligible. One of your uncles, or an older family man like the Earl of Ishtar, or even a woman, though that would be mildly scandalous. As a queen, few would dare comment about your choice of companions, but until you have proved an heir to the throne, provided an heir to the throne, there is great pressure on you to make an appropriate match. That doesn't mean you have to give in. It might be entertaining to see the reaction of Juliana, Duchess of Ursul, if you asked her to dance with you. Would she be flustered for once? After you pressured Bryn, the Duchess of Hellas, into marrying an Exionite, it might be something of a peace offering to dance with her now. You know that she prefers women, and she knows that you know. Dancing with her might set up expectations. The most important woman present, after yourself, is Aris, Duchess of Lila. She is married, elderly, a mother and grandmother many times over, but might be flattered by the acknowledgement of her status. Or, if you truly wanted to set the court on its ear, you could demand your first dance with a mere servant, a maid like Alice. The assembled nobles would be outraged. Alright, so those are your choices. I just wanted to show those. We're going to go dance with the dare. So we'll click through all of this again. Alright. Look at all of these choices. <laughs> the dare, young lord of Alath. Um, <laughs> hi, Elodie. He looks absolutely terrified at the prospect of having to dance with a girl, but the little lord is too well-bred to refuse you. Still, you'll have to be careful not to step on him. Dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father. Um, you knew him, knew his steps like a part of you. Now every move is a mystery. Unfortunately, you lose track of which steps you're supposed to do when and trip over your own feet. Oops. Between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle- <clears throat> Excuse me. There is time for the guests to mingle, chat, and sample tiny bites of exquisite food. You interact comfortably with your peers, leaving a wise word in every ear. During a lull in the music, Banyan, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass, letting the clear note ring out through the roof. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Banyan, oh how I hate you. <laughs> if I might have your attention, I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. Not only does she protect our borders, but she has begun to address the long-standing problem of a, sort of a shortage of heirs. My sister is proud to do her duty, as of course are others, such as myself and our lovely new queen. You can almost hear the chorus of eyebrows being raised. He's trying to suggest that he and I have some sort of romantic arrangement. If I don't deflect that, everyone will be sure it's true. May I have this dance, fair lady? You are pushing your luck, Banyan. Your use of his untitled name does not intimidate him. Am I? Surely as queen, you would act in accordance with your responsibilities, just as you expect of your court. Yes, I will marry, but I will marry the person who is best for me and my domain. So if you want to win my hand, you'd better set about proving your worth. The Duke of Marie smiles wryly and indicates his head er, and inclines his head to you, acknowledging you the victor of this little verbal sparring match. As the gala continues, you take the opportunity to observe nobles that you rarely see. There's Gwinnell, for instance, the young lady of Sudbury, only months older than you and due to finally inherit control of her duchy soon, or Adele, the youngest daughter of the Duchess of Lila and a fierce sportswoman. Hmm, excuse me. I woke up earlier than normal this morning, it's throwing everything off. Alright. She was a few years ahead of you at school and the absolute terror of the ball fields. No Brienne. She had said her parents were leaving her stuck at school this season. Her parents are here, dancing together, the Duke Consort clutching his Duchess possessively tight. Oh, and hey, in this one we get to find out why. Strange that there's no sign of your cousins, though. Shouldn't they be here? Your aunt and uncle are here, of course. It would be scandalous if they hadn't come, Merva being so close by. 
It's nice to be able to enjoy time with friends and family, isn't it? And after that grand ball, we are going to sneak out. So we are depressed again. So for week 18, we do decoration and voice. <sighs> this one's always fun. You wander downstairs to visit your father and talk about the latest events in the domain. You're moving with such enthusiasm that you don't realize your father isn't alone until it's too late to avoid him and his companion. You were too kind, Jocelyn. Countess Siren, not a member of your circles. She's a bit more than a decade your senior, far too old to have ever been your friend, and yet not at all old as noble women go. She has two minor titles, no husband, and your father's arm in her grasp. You take a deep breath. You manage to smile at her in what you hope is a welcoming manner. Good day to you, Countess. Your Highness, good day to you as well. I was just speaking with your father about... Well, it wasn't important. Please allow me to excuse myself. I don't wish to be in the way. She bows her head to you and exits. When she's gone, you raise an eyebrow at your father. This is the path that you have set us on. What do you mean? Your acts have made everyone think about preparations for the future. Caloris means an heir. My brother, your uncle Armand, is looking for a wife as well. One of us, at least, must produce more children. But, Mama, nothing can ever replace your mother. But we all have to do things that we don't want to do. Thanks, Jocelyn. You should be careful how you deal with people like Siren. You need the goodwill of your nobles as well as your commoners. There haven't been any problems so far. As queen, you must be aware of everything around you. Isn't that what I have agents for? Yes, but you must give them direction. What is your greatest concern? Assassins. I can deal with any problems that come up as long as I'm here to deal with them. It's assassins I'm worried about. You are your own best defense against assassins. Increasing your skills will help to protect you. Beyond that, you can train more soldiers into personal bodyguards to watch over you. Or you can inter bleh, bleh. Or you can institute harsh penalties for treason and make people too frightened to cross you. More guards. I need more guards. I have to be safe. As you wish. Going to attend services. And we're afraid again. How lovely. Uh, 19. So I did decoration and instrument. It is the time of the year to decide any necessary adjustments to the royal budget. The majority of the money we receive is already spoken for, but there is always some room for discretion. I really don't understand all of these numbers. Maybe I should leave them alone. Keep them the same. I think they're fine as they are. Wish you could do that normally. As you wish. Uh, what did I just do? That's week 19. So we're going to attend court. We're depressed again. Ah! That wasn't what I wanted to click. I wanted to click classes. And we did two in voice this week. You're requested to stand in judgment. A man has been convicted of the murder by strangling of his wife. The wife killer lumen that we can't do much about. He does not deny the act, or request a pardon that he might be set free. If you admit you killed your wife, why do you think I'm going to set you free? Excuse me. Save me, your majesty. It wasn't my fault. Demons made me do it. Everyone knows the power of magical beasties. They used me. They twisted my fingers into chains. My wife found me screaming. She tried to shake me, and the chains wrapped around her. I need the priestesses to bless me and make me clean again. Demons that make you attack people? Is that even possible? Whether they were demons or not, you still killed a woman, your wife. I won't forgive you for that. You will be imprisoned for the rest of your life. He opens his mouth to argue with you further, but then his shoulders slump. Yes, your majesty. We're going to attend services. Alright, classes. 
21. So what I had done before, wait, no. I did it in this order. Did horses in the morning and flattery in the afternoon. Er, that was week 22. Week 21, I did Novan history. You receive word that the murderer you condemned to prison has escaped. Um, a large explosion rocked the jail he was in, and uh, destroying the walls and setting many dangerous criminals free, which is rather unfortunate. <laughs> but, um, it's better. Well, I wouldn't say it's better, but there's not much I can do about it now. Uh, I really hate having to deal with this when I don't have any sense of magic skill at all, but this is just not that sort of playthrough. So, yeah. Oh god, I really hate this. Anyways, it will now fall to the royal treasury to repair the damage. And we attended court afterwards. Okay. So for week 22, this is when we do the flattery lesson. Okay. I regret to inform you that Fabian, um, the Earl Titan and Duke Regent of Alath, has passed away. This isn't really a surprise, he was pretty old. The problem is the political implications. With the control of Alath in doubt, it falls to the crown to make decisions. Young Lord Adair will not reach his 15th birthday for over two years. He requires a regent. His stepmother, Arise, the Duchess of Lila, has petitioned that the boy be left in her care. This would, however, leave her in personal control of two neighboring duchies, which is generally forbidden. Almost the entire eastern border. I don't know anything really bad about her, though. The boy does have a living grandfather, the Earl of Ishtar, or you might appoint an unrelated noble to act in his stead. The Earl of Ishtar has suggested another possibility. You and Adair are both young, not too far apart in age. You request that we accept the boy as your future husband and keep him here at the castle. Okay, I'll marry him. At least that way I won't get stuck with an old man. You can't actually marry him until he's old enough, but he will be brought here to live as your companion. <sighs> I love the whole marrying Adara thing, it's really cute. In Fruit 23 we did another in Horses. And we did some World History. Nothing particularly interesting there. Oh, this is why I had the, the skills. I wanted to have enough to make her my agent. Right. There is a woman here to see you. She, bleh. she is a musician and wishes crown patronage, which means money. Your Royal Highness, if you accept me as a member of your court, I will immortalize you in word and song. Oh, yeah, actually, the peasants approve of us this time, or the commoners, that's a better word for it. The commoners actually approve of us this time, so there was no poem. Okay. I have dabbled in musical styles from many countries and can entertain your guests and lighten your evenings. Musicians are often used as secret agents and messengers. They can be useful and dangerous. The musicians, bleh, the musician sings a little ditty to demonstrate her skills with the lute. It's okay, but nothing special. That might mean she has other talents. You are familiar with the traditions of many locations, yes? Can you also perform accents? I mum that I can. What about juggling? I can keep a set of dangers in the air. Interesting. I look forward to all that you have to tell me. We'll have to talk privately to see how much she knows, but I think she might be useful. And we're going to go talk to her. Your Highness, thank you again for the opportunity. Yes, yes. Now, what have you heard on your travels? What are the people saying about me? I haven't yet had the chance to play at many noble courts, although I intend to. You have the support of the common people, but not their love. Not yet. Of course, with me at your side, your popularity can only increase. Never underestimate the power of music. Which, that's actually pretty good foreshadowing for the Angel of Music ending. But that is not the ending we're going for this time. Uh, lots of history classes. 
Right, I was basically cramming for an event that's coming up. Foreign affairs and some more world history. And I'm going to save again. Right over here. Eh. What? Yeah, right, right. I forgot about that second save. I mean, it really threw me off. Okay. Done. <sighs> Excuse me. How is Adair settling into life at the castle? I found him in the garden trying to catch frogs, so I showed him a few tricks. I'm sure you'll work things out. Uh... We sneak out. For week 25, we do Novan history for both. Anything interesting here? Um, no, not really. Mm. Excuse me. Staring up into the sky out of your window, you notice a strange flash of light. A falling star, pretty. Oh, she's so cute. So dumb, but so cute. I'm trying to keep her and the even keel as much as I can. All right, we're not staying in this outfit, but I kind of want to show it off because it's kind of cute. I mean, I, I, th I think it's cute. I really like the flower in her hair, especially. Okay. Back to uh, the tea dress. Okay. So for week 26, we were really cramming for Novan history. <laughs> but this time, we max it out. Okay, anything interesting? Uh, going to have a drink of water. Hmm. <laughs> About 200 years ago, a great black cloud formed over Nova, bringing cold and sickness. The sun could not shine, and the air was gritty and foul-smelling. Many people died, including the queen at the time and most of the high nobility, before the cloud finally dissipated. <sighs> Until about a hundred years ago, the capital of Nova was on the shores of Cathry Lake in southern Coloris. After that became uninhabitable, a new capital was built here on Lampsy Island. It was the chaos of that period which triggered the eventual collapse of the Empire. The most famous ruler of ancient, Novan, of ancient Nova was King Latimer. According to the history texts, he began the policy of gathering light, which led to the predominance of the Empire. Unfortunately, the texts don't explain exactly what that policy was. There's a reference, but that volume is missing. And that's actually the name of one of the achievements. It's called A Gathering of Light. I don't- well, I have the achievement, but I haven't done it on a stream yet. I have unpleasant news to report. Talaris, the Duke of Sedna, has instituted high tariffs and trade restrictions at the Alath border. Business is disrupted, and there are growing shortages of supplies. Then the royal treasury will pay to keep the people fed. Very well. And now we go talk to Adair! Hi Adair! Uh, hi Elodie. How are you doing? Okay, I guess? It's really quiet here. How come you don't have any more brothers or sisters? I don't know. Mom Maurice said it's a noble duty, a noble's duty to have a big family. Well, not everyone agrees with her. Sorry. Should I kiss you now? What? If you want to. You have to bend over a little so he can reach. The result is damp. Sorry. This must be even more strange for him than it is for you. He's lost a parent too. And now everyone else is making decisions about his life, including you. If you'd like, you can come to some of my classes, or meet with the tutors that I'm not using that week. I mean, it's important for you to learn too, right? You're going to be a duke and a king consort, like my father. Okay. Oh, he's so cute! <sighs> Alright, now we start working on intrigue. Internal affairs. Hmm. Anything interesting here? 
Okay. That's to do with Talarist being a grouch and raising tariffs because he will not be able to become the Duke of Alath since Adair is going to marry Elodie. Alright. This is important right here, 80. Is, uh, there were many dark rumors about the second husband of the Duchess of Lila, possibly because he was a commoner. It was whispered that he once assaulted the young Duchess of Alath before her untimely marriage and demise. My lady, there are letters for you. Another letter from Brienne. Why does she keep writing me? We were never even friends. She says she's bored and lonely and she's looking forward to, meet to seeing me at Gwinnell's birthday party. That's right. Gwinnell is about to turn 15. She'll be Duchess of Sudbury for real now. This other letter must be my invitation to her birthday celebration next week. Gwinnell and I were friends at school, and this will be a big event, but it's also a long way to travel. A lot of things can happen on the road. It'll be good to see my friends. And that is why I hired bodyguards. <laughs> Alright, attend services. Maybe 28, we have one more in internal affairs. And we have classes in composure. Right? Right? Yes. After years of marriage and three children, the Duchess of Lila divorced her second husband and refused to say why. Shortly afterwards, he was found dead in a nearby forest. The Duchess of Lila and her son, the Earl of Io, have been estranged ever since. The Earl of Ilo Io now lives with his sister, the Duchess of Mead. After the last Duke of Mead went into seclusion, he hired a stream of attractive young servants who had to be frequently replaced after injuries and accidents. He eventually died by falling from a high tower window, which his family eventually covered up. Which his family covered up. But was it suicide they were hiding, or murder? You have nothing more to learn about internal affairs. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, Arise is really one of the few sane people in her family, because many, many bad things have happened. And we learn a little bit about them, and I have more context for that. Anyways, on your journey to Sudbury, your carriage is attacked by bandits. Luckily, your bodyguards are well prepared for such an event, and manage to drive off the attackers. You are inconvenienced and annoyed, but not harmed. Gwinnell's party is lovely. Not nearly as glamorous as your own upcoming birthday will be, of course, but it's still a major event on the noble social calendar. Everyone who has anyone will be present. Uncle Laurent and your younger cousins are here, but Charlotte and her mother are not. Apparently, Charlotte was ill. There are refreshments and dancers and musicians and polite conversations. And one or two not so polite. Will not be shoved aside. Mother, it's my domain now. I need space for myself. You have your own lands to manage. Just because you're of age doesn't mean you know everything, young lady. You need my advice. This is my home. It has never been yours. Before you can back away, their gazes fall on you. They wait expectantly for you as near queen to settle the dispute. Feelings could be easily hurt on either side here. It's important that everyone involved save face. Hmm. I'm sure you have a great deal of wisdom to impart. But isn't that what you've already done? You have to trust in the strength of your own teachings. Trust in the strength and the intelligence of your daughter. Neither of them looks entirely happy, but neither of them looks angry with you either. A bit later, Brienne catches up with you. Hello, Elodie. It's so wonderful that you're going to be queen now. I mean, I am sorry about your mother. Thanks. But think of the opportunities you're going to have. You're so lucky. That's an odd way of putting it. Anyway, I was wondering, now that you're almost queen and everything, have they told you all the secrets? What secrets? Like, how to get into the old palace. I've heard it's packed full of treasure. You mean the old capital by Cathery Lake? The abandoned one? Exactly. They had to leave in a hurry, so they left all kinds of treasure behind. And nobody ever goes there, because the forest is supposed to be haunted, so the treasure's probably still there. The forest isn't just haunted, it's full of monsters like the Keithong. But what if she's right and it is full of ancient treasure? I don't know any secrets about getting into the old palace. Yet. But if you come back to the castle with me, we can check the archives. Great! I knew you could help. I'm supposed to go back to school, but I was already planning to sneak off. I'll ditch my escort, sneak ahead, and meet you at the castle. This could be fun. At the end, you all share a pleasant meal and prepare to return to your various lands. I'm going to attend services. Oh, we are pressured. I'd forgotten about that. Is that right? 
I don't think that's right. Crap. I really don't think that's right. I think I did something wrong here. Uh, I'm concerned. I think I messed up somewhere, but I can't imagine where. <sighs> and I last saved at week 23. <laughs> All right. Show skip button. Load. Yes. And we back up while I fix this. Horses and competition flattery. I'm just gonna run through this real quick. Wait, this week 24. Okay. I completely lost track of where I was because I'm really flustered now. Um. <laughs> I don't know what my mood's supposed to be there, but I know that it's not supposed to be pressured. So, I want to be nudging her towards lonely. Alright. Hmm. I don't know what went wrong. I honestly have no idea. Week 25 is that. Skip that. Going to attend services. Right, that's okay. Classes. Um, it's week 26, so we did two more in Novan history. Pleasant news, send emergency aid. That should be the same. Talk to Adair. He can if you want. Right, that's all normal. Guess I'll save here. Um, all right, internal affairs. That wasn't what I meant to do. Alright, skip. We're going to Sudbury for the party. I am really puzzled here. Sure. I am so confused. I am so very confused. <laughs> I don't possibly know what went wrong here. Excuse me a moment. Uh, let's see. Week 28. Uh, yeah, turn services, turn services. Huh. Alright. Maybe, maybe I did that. Right. Okay. I am so very puzzled. What did I just do? Well, it's attending services for the next few weeks anyway. Next few weeks. Week 28. One in internal affairs. One in composure. Here it's attacked by bandits. We have all of that. Flatter them both. All right, offer to help. 
plus one willful. I am so confused. Plus one lonely, plus one afraid. I think... Yeah, I was meant to explore the castle, maybe. Oh, I should have saved right there. Crap. I hope this doesn't mess everything up. Conversation, court manners, and royal demeanor, another in composure. Yes. Hopefully that's right. Okay. I found a bunch of maps of the area around Cathry Lake. Great! I also found reports on all sorts of nasty monsters down there. That was hundreds of years ago. The palace was abandoned hundreds of years ago. The reports never stopped. I can't find anyone who's gone into the old forest and come back. Mm. Well, if it is full of treasure, would you want to tell anyone how you got in and stole some? Look, I know it's dangerous. I'm not stupid. But you and I are educated noblewomen, not peasants. I'm good with a sword and a bow. And you, don't you have magic powers now that you're a queen? Um, no. <laughs> so come with me. It'll be an awesome adventure. Our parents are going to be so impressed. Is that what this is really about? Brienne's parents? Brienne, what is going on with you and your family? Nothing. Really, nothing. Ever since Uncle Kevin moved in, my parents don't want anything to do with me. I'm an adult now, you know. Technically, she's 16. <sighs> I'm not gonna get into all this stuff with the ages and adulthood in Nova. Anyways. And they still say I should be at school all the time. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm the heir. I should be I should be spending time in Mead. When did your uncle move in? I don't know. A few years ago. After Grand's divorce. The Duchess of Lila divorced her second husband, Jail, and he died right afterwards. She probably had him killed. Most people think that was no great loss because there are all sorts of horrible rumors about Jail. But the Earl of Io, Brienne's uncle Kevin, was quite upset about it. I guess he liked his stepfather. That must have been a stressful time for your family. Yeah, I'm sure, but so what? That was years ago. They've had plenty of time to get over it. I just want them to pay attention to me. If I find the lost treasures of Nova, they have to notice. You've already run away from school. If they don't notice that, they won't notice anything. You mean, it's hopeless? No, I mean, all you need to do is stay here and wait. Getting into more trouble won't make a difference. Oh, I guess maybe you're right. Thanks, Elodie, you're smarter than I remembered. Arr! Don't blame her for being angry. Um, we're going to attend service. So we're still yielding, which I think is right. Uh, I really hope I didn't screw up my own guide. That'd be sad. All right, public speaking and presence. Huh. No, I think that's right. <sighs> I really hope so. The Duchess of Mead is here to see you, my lady. Elodie, where's my daughter? Which daughter? You know very well that I only have one. Really, mother? Because sometimes I think you don't have one at all. Brienne, thank goodness you're all right. Oh, now you care? You certainly didn't want to see me before. You haven't let me come home in ages. Brienne, darling, there are things you don't understand. I don't understand because you never tell me anything. The Duchess sighs and embraces her daughter. Very well, if that's what it will take. Come home with me and I will explain everything. Looks like everything worked out for the best. And services. Okay, I will know if it was right if this works as it is meant to. Elegance and presence. And let me take a look at my skills. Yeah, I already maxed composure, so maxing out elegance and presence here will mean I'm on the right track. Alright, elegance and presence. Okay. <sighs> As you are walking through the Great Hall, a freak gust of wind suddenly blows out all the candles in the room. How strange, there must be an open window somewhere. You receive a letter from Brienne hinting at some of the complicated family drama that has been going on. 
Her father keeps alternating between wanting a divorce and being afraid of losing his home. There's an extra section at the end of the letter written in code. Alright. So this bit's pretty horrifying. Her uncle and his stepfather? Her uncle and her mother? As in... Jail erased his second husband, Kevin's stepfather. Um... Well, the term they use in the game, when it's when it really comes up, it's they say seduced. So, you know, <laughs> it forced Kevin into sexual situations. And uh, Kevin's younger brother walked in on them. And uh, Thaddeus walked in on them. And Thaddeus then tells Aris, and Aris promptly um, divorces him and has him killed. And Kevin... Then runs to Corisandi and uh, incest happens. So that that that's just lovely. All right, there's your wonderful context of the day and an achievement. Oh, it's, no wonder she was trying to hide it. Well, I hope she'll be happier now. I'm going to go play with toys. All right, so we're still yielding. Conversation. We do public speaking and flattery, which we should max out the week after this. I'm going to save now, in case something else goes wrong. Hmm. Things have been so unsettled lately. Everyone's on edge. We need something cheerful. You could hold a tournament. What a good idea! Knights, jousting, musicians, all sorts of competitions. Everyone loves a contest. What will you offer as prizes to the winners? Doesn't exactly matter, but I didn't want to spend more gold, so I just said employment. The winners will have the option of taking up royal appointments. It's a recruitment drive. Very well, I will draft the announcements. You leave him to his work. As you move through the hall, your eye falls upon a vase of flowers. Pretty, but apparently not getting enough water. The leaves on one blossom have shriveled. Someone on hall duty is being lazy. Those flowers should be replaced. You continue up the stairs to your room, where a maid is waiting for you. My lady, a gift has arrived from Kigal. From the Duke? No, my lady. A merchant house, I believe. It was sent with a shipment down the Kavala River. You tear open the brightly, fine, the brightly colored paper to find chocolates! There's a little card with the box, with our compliments, the house of Krellat. Krellat. That's oddly high-handed for some tiny trader I've never heard of. There's something suspicious about this. You can't think of any safe way to test the chocolate, and don't want to leave it lying around where it might present a danger to others. Eventually, you mash the candies together into an unappetizing paste and bury the box in the palace garden. It's a waste if they weren't really poisoned. My candy. Oh, poor Elodie. But trust me, honey, it's better this way. Because <laughs> they were poisoned. Public speaking and flattery. Right, yep, we're still on the right track. That's good. This is the week of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against each other. The people will be pleased if you participate in their games. However, it would expose you to danger. Which event do you wish to take part in? Mounted Parade. Now, this is the interesting part. You choose to lead the parade mounted on a brilliant white horse. You don't actually know how to ride, but the horse is well trained, so all you need to do is sit up straight, look regal, and don't fall off. All the winners are announced and displayed to great cheers. As near queen, you place flower garlands around their necks. And we're going to go attend services. Okay. And we're going to hopefully max out court manners here. Do some world history next. Yep, maxed out corn, or bleh, court manners. <laughs> I know how to talk. My lady, your father wishes to speak with you. He says it's urgent. Fine, I'm coming. You find your father standing over a map of the coastline, his face grave. Ships have been sighted on approach from Sangia. Not trade ships, this is a war fleet. What? Within a week, they will be in Novan waters. Within two, they could reach the capital. Then we will fight to defend ourselves. You can try to use the treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, but it may be difficult on short notice. 
No, it's too late for that. You will need to draw up a naval strategy for our ships to carry out. You could choose to act as admiral and lead the fleet in person, but the danger to you would be very great. Unless you think your personal skills will make the difference, I would strongly advise against it. No, there's too much to do here. I can't go to sea. Do your best and Noah will survive. Mm. Go attend services again. We spent a lot of time attending services in this one. Okay, so history, foreign affairs, and another in world history for week 35. Okay. And this is the same class as next week as well. Anything important? Nope. Also, nope. Danger on the high seas. Ships close in on each other, angling into range. The Santians have half again as many troops as you do. It doesn't look promising. The eventual outcome? is not in your favor. The Novan ships are sunk or scattered as the Sanjian forces press towards landfall. Many good soldiers were lost today and Nova's troubles have not ended. Since you failed to repel the invasion, the Sanjian fleet will soon land and their troops will begin to pro progress towards your city, your capital city. Your remaining soldiers will hold them off as long as possible, of course, but the main strength of your military has been exhausted. Nova's future looks bleak. What did I do this weekend? I did not put it in the guide. He sneak out. I better write that down. Um, sneak out. Just fixing that so that I actually have it written down. Okay, we do another in foreign affairs and world history. <sighs> this part's not going to be fun. <laughs> ah, hello my friend. I just, I suppose Twitch finally decided to cooperate with you. You're just in time for the climactic event. The invasion of Nova is proceeding. Your coastline is under Sanjian control. Soldiers have marched through villages, trampling fields, and frightening citizens. A diplomatic delegation from Sanjia has requested access to the castle to discuss terms, most likely for your surrender. You lack the strength to hold off their armies, and surrendering now will save many lives. It would seem that you have no choice. You prepare yourself as best you can to meet with the representatives from Sanjia. You expected diplomats and a military representative, a general or an admiral. You did not expect the handsome man decked in jewels who now stands before you, a man announced by your servants as Togami, King of Sanjia. The current leader of Sanjia should be Queen Junko. Is this her husband or a usurper? My dear young lady, how difficult this must be for you, so much responsibility at a tender age. You yearn to slap the false sympathy off his oily face, but you force yourself to remain calm. War benefits no one, don't you think? Such a terrible waste. Better to so bleh. Better to pff, I can talk. I swear I know how to talk. Better to settle things in a civilized manner. A contest, a game so to speak, with Nova as the stakes. Should I win, then your domain will submit and accept me as overlord with no further resistance. Like Togami, can you be any more obviously evil? Should I lose, then my army will leave your domain in peace and shed no more blood. <laughs> Is he hot? I assume you're talking about Togami? I mean, you can see him for yourself. But obviously there's a slight lag in the stream. Um, I guess, if, if that's your type. I, I, I just think the whole overlord bit kind of kills any attractiveness he might have. Did I read what he said here? I think I read what he said here. What sort of game? It is well known that Nova is ruled by Lumens. As it happens, I too possess the powers of a Lumen. I propose a formal duel. My power is against yours. The winner takes control of Nova, the loser dies. But I'm not a Lumen! Saving it- bleh, heh, Saving it for the coronation, were you? Such a pity that you'll be underprepared. 
unprepared. Well then, go and find your crystal. Becoming a Lumen is a very simple matter. Then we can have our duel. What's the point? You know I can't win. Why don't you just kill me now? Because that's not the game. You want to save your people, don't you? I want to fight a Lumen. If you refuse, then the war will continue. I'll sweeten the deal. If you meet me on a formal Lumen challenge, I'll call off the invasion even if I win. Really? I swear it by the gods. Nova will be free and safe. Why take that risk? You're winning the war. It's not your land that I want. It's your crystal. To gain your power, I am willing to wager my own. Shall we begin? I don't like this, but what choice do I have? <sighs> Let's take a drink of water before I have to read this part. <sighs> oh, this part's horrible. I love it. But at the same time, I really don't. <laughs> then I must. No, not my little girl. You want to fight the Lumen ruler of Nova? Your father reaches into his pocket and pulls out a shimmering blue crystal which he places over his heart. Illuminate! Your hair stands on end as a veil of blue sparkles settles over your father, crawling into his skin. When it's over, the jewel has been absorbed into his body without a trace. Fight me. Leave her alone. Well, this is not what I expected, but it will serve my purposes just as well. Daddy? Be quiet, Elodie. You are not a queen yet. You are forced to sit and watch as the two men work out the details of the duel and its stakes, then take their places in a carefully warded circle. Your father crosses his arms, summoning up a, gray, a thick gray fog that swirls around him, hiding him from view. But the Sanjian King conjures a cloud of glowing butterflies which, dry, which dive into the fog and blow it apart. Then the invader claps his hands together and chants. Fiery red lights cluster over his fingertips and merge together into a pulsing blob before erupting towards your father. He resists with a beam of blue, catching the infernal energy and pushing it back in Togami's direction. You knew what the outcome would be. You knew it all along. Togami is a trained lumen, eager to demonstrate his powers, and your father was your father. The blue crystal reappears, lying beside your father's body like an innocently discarded bauble, but now that blue color is colored by a faint wash of red. The smirking King of Sandia sweeps the crystal off the floor and tucks it away into his robes. How fitting. First I end your mother's life, and then your father's. You what? You didn't think her death was an accident, did you? That took careful planning. And now the Novan power is mine, and you even get to live. He holds out a hand in front of him, the elegant robe dangling freely. Now kneel and kiss my hand. You stare at that horrible hand hovering before you. You have a choice. That was not our bargain. You are a cold one, aren't you? Very well. Have your little victory. You have so few of them, after all. <sighs> I really don't think this is worth the achievement that you get for it. <laughs> I really don't think it's worth it. Because for all that I hate Jocelyn, and I don't know if you've ever heard my rants, but I have many a rant about Jocelyn, but I don't think... I, I <laughs> it, He didn't deserve to die that way. Well, as I promised, the invasion will end, and my men and I will return across the sea. Unless one of you is so foolish as to attack me, then all deals are off. No one stirs. Pity. <sighs> I really don't like Togami. <laughs> At least not in this ending. In the Angel of Music ending, he's okay. Ish. He still killed your mother, and this is the only way you find out, is if he also kills your father. And we're gonna go talk to Juliana. I can't believe it. All this time, my father was a Lumen. No, he was not. What do you mean? Your father carried a crystal, but he had never bonded with it until the day, until that day when he was forced to defend you. It must have been passed down in his family. The line of Caloris is well educated in the lore of the past. Had you been only his heir and not the princess of Nova, perhaps he would have taught you differently. There's so much he never told you, and now you'll never know. Why didn't you help him? If he wasn't a Lumen until just that moment, you knew he had no chance. Why didn't you fight Togami? Isn't that what you're supposed to be for? Did you not listen? That man came to claim the power of the Novan Royal Crystal. Togami accepted your father's challenge because your father was the king. Therefore he believed, incorrectly, that he had found the prize he was looking for. My challenge would not have satisfied him. That's just an excuse. 
You have no idea what others have sacrificed in your name. Do not presume to criticize. You live, and your crystal is safe. You may take up your powers as your coronation is planned. Then, if you wish, we can train you in the strength you will need to seek vengeance. Become a Lumen? Do you really want to do that now? If you'd had your powers, it would have been you and not your father in that duel. Fine, I'll do what I have to do. Oh God, poor Elodie. I feel for her, I really do. Alright. Going to max out foreign affairs. And... Um, do decoration. The war has ended and the Sanjians have withdrawn. All throughout Nova, a fragile layer of calm lays over a deeper pit of uncertainty and fear. Your court musician has already constructed an epic ballad about your father's last moments. His nobility, his love, his brave sacrifice. His praises are sung in every village square. Rich merchants foresee a great trade in artwork commemorating both your parents. That doesn't make them any less dead. We're gonna go talk to Adair. Elodie? Yeah? I'm sorry about your dad. Yeah. Do you want to look at some beetles? I saw a really big green one. Okay. It seems ridiculous when you consider it. The future king and queen of Nova, two lost little orphans grubbing in the mud. But it's better than being alone. And that was the scene I did this entire playthrough for. Was that scene with the dare. <laughs> so I knew that Jocelyn was going to get offed the entire time I was setting this up before. But it doesn't make it any less painful, even though I hate him. And I'm gonna put on my favorite outfit before the coronation, though it does not particularly matter. Um, did one in instrument and one in voice. Yeah. Visitors have arrived to see you. Your family, or what remains of it. My poor darling Elodie, you should not be alone at a time like this. There is still much there is still so much to be done, and you you so young. We have come to give you whatever help we can. Thank you. She's right after all. You have a coronation to plan, a domain to run, and without your father, you need some adult to give mm. excuse me. You need some adult to give you advice. Time has slipped by you so quickly. Only two weeks remain before your birthday celebration and your official coronation is queen. Have you done enough to build a stable Nova? It is traditional for the palace to provide entertainment and refreshment for the common people when a new monarch is crowned. It is a rare opportunity for the poor of the land to dine like nobles. Considering the recent tragedy, celebrations may appear to be in poor taste. The size and scope of any such feast depends on what expense the royal treasury is willing to bear. Now, ordinarily, because we have the money for it, I would have gone with an extravagant feast. But, given the circumstances, just a respectable one. I'm sure we can afford to give everyone in the city some bread and sausage and a bit of cake. I'm going to visit Charlotte, and this part's even sadder <laughs> than the thing with the dare. Lodi, I'm sorry about your dad. Why? Why does it always have to be something like this before we get to see each other? I'm sorry. For a while, all you can do is cling to your cousin and cry. At least you are not alone. <laughs> My feels, they hurt. Alright. Decoration and instrument. <sighs> the castle is buzzing with preparations for your upcoming coronation. Ministers press you with details for your favorite colors and flowers and so on. You are happy to collaborate with the designers to ensure you are, you are shown off to the best possible effect. You were still so young, after all. Good design will help a lot in making you look like a queen. Others are more interested in the subject of your marriage. My dear child, there is no sh shame in delaying matters for a little while. You're so young and you've been through so much. I cannot bear the thought of my old little Charlotte rush into marriage at your age. Remember poor Kaylee? I really hope that's how you pronounce that name. But I don't know. Anyways, the last Duchess of Alath? She was only 17 when she died. I am not suggesting that you break your word to your fiancé, only that you take the time to reflect. It's important to ensure the 
the stability of the domain. That is exactly why Kaylee's father forced her into that marriage, so that Ilath would have an heir. And then she died giving birth to Adair. There are dangers, but it is still your duty, isn't it? <sighs> why did I not write this down? Alright. We attend services. <laughs> People are angry. I suppose it's better than being depressed. I have to write this down so that I can fix my stuff later. Okay. Um, it's week 40, so it really, really doesn't matter what we do at this point. But we're going to do instrument and voice, even though we have a penalty to it. Because it really doesn't matter. At this time last year, you were celebrating your 14th birthday. You were in the school garden, surrounded by your friends. A teacher brought you tea and cakes, while a wealthy merchant's son wove a crown of flowers for your head. It didn't matter so much that you were a princess then. Your title was something for the future. Many of your peers would be duchesses or earls or the like someday, but not then. You were children. Your parents could not attend on the actual day, but they did send wonderful gifts. Some for you, and some for you to share. And a week later, they came for a visit, and your mother took you with her through the countryside in a splendid carriage. It was the last time you would ever see her. You wonder if, wherever she is, she can see you now. You are 15 years old, a legal adult. You... <sighs> I have... I have many feelings about 15 being the age of majority in Nova, but moving on. You have worked and studied and suffered and prepared, and now the time has come. You kneel before the priestess, barely hearing her words as she recites the blessings. She calls upon the gods to deliver peace, wisdom, and prosperity to you, and through you, to all of Nova. And then she calls upon you for your oath of rulership. Will you guide and govern and protect your people to the best of your ability according to law and custom? I will. Will you, to the best of your power, uphold I the ideals of love, honor, justice, and mercy? I will. Lords and ladies assembled, I present to you your undoubted queen who has sworn you her loyalty. You who have come to give homage, will you do the same? One at a time, the head of each duchy approaches your throne and kneels to swear his or her service to you and your heirs. People of Nova, I give you Elodie, daughter of Fidelia, your true sovereign. What say you all? And they all shout, Long live the queen! Thank you, I will. And now, the epilogue slides! I'm going to drink the last of my water before I get into this. Okay. After the coronation, in a private ceremony with the High Priestess, Elodie was officially offered her mother's lumen crystal. The, that light and power would become a part of her, the tradi a tradition that had been passed down for hundreds of years. The tragic events of the past year left a gap in the Novan power structure, since Jocelyn, Duke of Caloris, died with no acknowledged heir to his title. Elodie, of course, was the reigning queen, which by tradition would prevent her from holding the duchy as well. In order to resolve the situation quickly and keep the lands within her family, Elodie offered to grant control of Caloris to her uncle Laurent, the current Duke of Merva. The title of Merva, in the meantime, would be transferred to her Aunt Lucille, who had always claimed to be descended from the extinct Mervan line. It would then be up to that couple which of their children inherited which territories. The subject of magic and lumens remained a slightly uncomfortable one for the citizens of Nova, perfectly fine for the queen, who had inherited it by divine right, but not something that other people should be aspiring towards. Look at all, look at all the terrible things that happened when that power fell into the wrong hands. As an openly acknowledged lumen, Juliana, Duchess of Ursul, was met with public suspicion whenever she journeyed outside of her duchy. At times, that suspicion was accompanied with thrown vegetables. It did not matter that Elodie supported her fully as a member of the court. That only led the commoners to whisper that Juliana was a bad influence on their queen. Juliana's perpetually unmarried state was even more worrying to those with ragging tongues. What if that influence rubbed off on the queen and left Nova with no heir? True to his word, Togami and the Sanjians ignored Nova in the years to come, focusing their efforts instead on the fort bleh, on the far northern continent of Borealis. Long ago, Borealis had been home to the largest known collection of lumens in the world. If their crystals remained and Togami found them, he could become unstoppable. And yet, he did make mistakes. 
He had failed to remove all the crystals of power from Nova, after all. If he came their way again, this time the Novan Lumens would be ready for him. Years later, when they were both adults, Elodie, Queen of Nova, and Adair, Duke of Alath, were married. An entire week of public celebrations was set aside for the wedding, and both bride and groom paraded through the capital on fine white horses from the east. Their relationship often seemed to be more... More one of friends and companions than passionate lovers, but they brought stability to Nova. The young Elodie always had a way with words, had always had a way with words, and that would serve her well. The true battleground of any war is in the hearts and minds of the people, and thus Queen Elodie's legacy stretched into the future. Okay, so that's a guide that I actually wrote, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to pull up the log for myself to look at and we're back to the title screen oh god I still have to change the name on my computer that's fun um anyways that was long live the queen with uh, marrying Adair finding out the truth of some of Brienne's family troubles and uh Fighting out the truth of your mother's death after losing your father. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a doozy of a playthrough. Um, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next stream. Bye!